What's up, Solutionaries? What's going on, Solutionaries? Every set, every weekday, Monday through Friday, not Saturday and Sunday, we tap in at 6 p.m. Eastern. Talk about pop culture issues, talk about a little bit of hood politics, talk about some health and fitness, talk about civics, talk about things that's going on in the world. If you're just ch- jumping in, guys, hit that like button, smash the like button. I want to make content that makes sense. And the only way we do that is if we get boosted to the algorithm so more people can see it, more people can support it if they choose to voluntarily. Y'all know we do that voluntary shit. Y'all know we libertarian. We're liberty-based because some of you may not be libertarian. So do me a huge favor. Jump in the chat. Make some comments. Hit the like button. All that other good stuff. Very, very important, guys. Um, today we're going to talk about a few things. Um, one more, a little more serious, but could get serious. Kind of, Kind of interrelated, right? But one is more serious than the other because one deals with uh, the death. Peace protocol. How are you? Guys, if you come in and smash that like button, share the live. Share the live all over the place. Very important. Share the live. Saying about, obviously, we're going to be entertaining. Obviously, we're going to talk. We're going to chop it up in the chat. You guys that want to support our work, you know, we're on a tour. We got Chicago, Cleveland, St. Louis. Uh, what's it called? Uh, Baton Rouge. Phoenix, we got all of that coming up. We on the road for the whole month of October. And saying that to say, we 100% need everybody's support in doing that. All of the classes, in-person classes are free to all because of your voluntary donations. And if you want to support today with a super chat, you got a crazy question, you want a little bit more attention, a little energy, let's let's try to do, yesterday our goal was $200. So let's try to get $200 today, but in the super chats, that goes towards our work. And throughout, right beneath my name or beneath me in the screen, you see blackgunsmatter.shop. That's where you can go to get some of the merch, like our most effective devil in America. All that other good stuff. Protocol says, all is well. Prepping for this storm to do what it do our way. Where you at, Protocol? What part of town you in? And guys, the support is what matters. All right, again, super weapons. Boom. First super chat. Super weapon says, great videos the last past few weeks. Emailing you tomorrow about the writing stuff with BGM. Absolutely. See, everybody wants to write for Solutionary University. Oh, protocol down in Savannah. I see that. Savannah is where uh, Daniel Defense has an amazing headquarters down there. I know Marty Daniel. I got a couple of his rifles. I went down to their new facility down there in Savannah. It's amazing. She looked like NASA in there, right? You could eat off the floor. It's literally that clean. All right. But again, thanks, Super Weapons, for that. Appreciate that five dollar chat. So we had, we need one hundred and ninety five more dollars, guys. One hundred ninety four more dollars towards the work. Two hundred dollars. I can get. Three classes worth of handouts. If you don't know that all of our in-person classes are basic firearms, we give out handouts curriculum that everybody leaves. With. So that'll help a lot, guys. Let's get $195 more worth of Super Chats. Thank you again, Super Weapons, for that. So um, if you want to support, guys, the Super Chats help. We have a goal. Let's say we try to get $200 every Super Chat, right? That makes sense. If there's 300 people in here and if everybody gives a, a buck, right, everybody gets some support. So we get $195 away. You can support by going to blackgunsmatter.shop, getting some merch, getting some cool merch. There's a whole sale section over there, very cool merch for very low, $20 hoodies, stuff like that. And you can donate to the work at givesingle.com forward slash solutionary. So I want to jump straight to it, guys. Let me turn off my, my music here for one second. You guys know I listen to a lot of classical music, a lot of classical music. Um, we're going to talk about first about the Young Dolph scenario. For those of you that are not aware, Young Dolph was a hip hop artist uh, out of Memphis. And he was brutally murdered, shot in his own town, a community spot that he normally goes to, a cookie spot. He was shot down. And we're going to go into some of those details. But his trial gets underway. And it's a it's a shit show over there, y'all. I mean, I, I can't even like it's not even like funny. It's a shit show. The the understanding of what went down with the beef between Dolph and, 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 and you know, CMG guys and. You know, last time I heard Young Gotti, Yo Gotti talk about it, he was, I think, on The Breakfast Club. And this might have been years ago, before before he was shot. Off the hook, what's up? Off the hook is from Philly. What's up, off the hook? He was shot and killed. And this was before he was shot. And Yo Gotti was having a conversation about the last conversation that he had via text. And he showed Charlemagne his phone. And he was like, yo, it's all love. It's all positive. But that's what a gangster would say. You know, that's 100 percent what a gangster would say. If, I, if I'm if I'm planning to murder you, I definitely want the whole world to know that I have no problems. with you. 
Huge shouts to Vaughn with the $9.99 check. Keeping it solutionary nine. I appreciate that. And now we need, what's that, 15, 185 more dollars towards the super chat. Again, your support goes towards all of our work. And if you are do, doing a super chat, please, guys, name a company, give your own um, social media a shout. What's up, Bookworm? How are you? Give your own social media a shout and things like that in the comment when you do the super chats. I think if you're going to donate towards the work and paying it forward for other people, people should know who you are. We got to start highlighting the good things. All right. So thank you again for that $9.99 chat. We need $185 away from our goal. Let's, let's set the goal now, guys. Let's say every day we're going to try to do $250 in super chats every day. All right. Monday through Friday. Let's see if we can do that. That supports a lot of the work. OK. So anyway, guys. Um, Gotti has seemed to not be a part of it. Gotti has seemed to not have a conversation about it. And based on what he said on The Breakfast Club, and I'm going to be very clear, this is all public information. This is not some shit I'm telling because I, I don't do the dry snitching shit. I communicate with you guys about what's happening in pop culture. And then we turn it into a solution. What can we do to avoid these scenarios? All right. And that goes into the second half of what we're going to be talking about tonight. This discussion with T.I. and Boosie running down on his son, King, and other folks that shoot in the music video with fire. So all of this, this content tonight is connected. All right. If you're coming into the live on X, on Rumble, on whatever. Peace, D-Rob. How are you? D-Rob, I'm, I'm going to just start calling you D-Rob. I can't. I, I, Big D, I, I, hey, brother, listen, we very pause worthy on the show. Y'all see them Dame Dash pause buttons? I think I'm going to get one of those. What's up, though, Rob? How are you? So this is me talking about what happened, what's going on in pop culture, giving you guys my perspective, and then tying it into solutions. We are solutionaries. We are force multipliers for good in our communities, our nation, our families, and all of that. Okay? Very important. So this isn't something that I'm saying like on some dry snitch shit or anything like that. These are this is public information because I, I respect a certain code. The, the men that were that are dead are dead. The testifying has happened. And even if I wanted to dry snitch or wet snitch, whatever you want to call it, all of the people involved in the shooting have 1000 percent beat me to it. 1000 percent beat me to it. I mean, they are in there chatting. All right. So let's read up a little bit. On what we got here with this young Dolph situation here. Um, let me read this real quick for you all. Young Dolph, a timeline following the event after the Memphis rapper's shooting. The rapper was shot and killed November 17th, 2021 in Memphis, Tennessee. Cornelia, Cornelia Smith, one of the people charged in, re in relation to the 2021 killing of young Dolph, testified in court Monday afternoon saying he participated in the hit on the rapper because of the promised payout. I want you to pay attention to all of this. We're going to tie it all in together. And I want you to give you, you guys give me your perspective. OK. Smith said he and Justin Johnson, whose trial started Monday, was set to receive $40,000 each when Hernandez Govan, the man prosecutors say was the mastermind behind the killing, receiving $20,000. Shelby County Deputy District Attorney Paul Hagerman had Smith talk in detail about his problems with drugs. At the time, Smith was taking Oxycontin and ecstasy. Now. When a rat starts saying shit like that, I was on drugs. It was hard for me. I needed the money. He's 1,000% been incentivized by the state to fucking rat. Now, I am not a participant in any type of violent crime. I also don't care about people selling and using drugs. And let me explain what I mean. Sidebar, that's going to get cut. If I run for office, they're going to cut this rest of the sentence out, and they're going to leave the part that says, I don't care about anybody using or selling drugs. And they're not going to take, they're going to take all of the context out. So I want to add that in there for everybody that's logical and thinks a little bit further. When people use and sell drugs, that is called a voluntary exchange. White sugar is six times as addictive as cocaine, but it's sold. Okay. It's sold. Alcohol is poison. I mean, if you enjoy it, great. You like the buzz that comes with it. The buzz that you have is your body and your brain's reaction to um, the poison. Hard liquor. It, your, your body tries to make you kind of go to sleep to recuperate, to run it through the bloodstream. OK, but anyway, the government sells that and nobody bats an eye. The government has a food and drug administration. Nobody bats an eye. All right. So the government that participates in all of these things and adults, adults that are legitimately making a decision to do what they want to do with their body. That is the height of freedom. Now, Obviously, you're a moron if you take fentanyl. You're a moron. If you shoot heroin, cool. Okay? You're, you're a moron. It's, it's not good for you. All right? So 
the free market exchange of people choosing to take whatever flowers or ingestibles, whatever it is, I have no problem with that. Crime to me is a murder. That's why I will always salute homicide detectives. I'm not fond of um, most law enforcement walking around like beat cops. No, because I think they violate their oath to the Constitution and all of that. But when we're talking about a homicide, we're talking about an actual victim, Dolph, his family, his estate, his ability to generate resources for his estate and his legacy. That was a that, that was a victim. OK, so I want to be clear about that. So when a rat is talking about, oh, I took Oxycontin and I needed the money, they've been probably incentivized to rat by the state. And I think that's some of the most unprincipled shit in the world. You decided to do a thing. You know what it was. You are responsible for your participation in it. That's it. It's not about glorifying crime, which, which creates victims. If it's just a violation to a statute, I don't care so much about it. OK. However, this was a crime. OK. And this guy wanted to be all of them, You'll, as we'll see tonight. All of these dudes running around ratting on each other. And wait till y'all hear the, the big gist of the whole situation. And it's a few twists and turns in this scenario. A few twists and turns. All right. Dark Smithius with the $10 super chat. Appreciate you there, Dark Smithius. And Vaughn, again, $10 joint, says, you know what? You get valid life lessons and knowledge that I pass on in my circle. Take 10 more. I appreciate that, my brother. So I think we now, that's $20 more. I think we get $165 away. Stay 200 today and tomorrow we'll go to 250 Right. If we get 200 today, we'll push up to 250 and that'll be enough. So we're about one hundred and sixty five dollars away from our goal. All right. For today's chat. Thank you all for that. Listen, Bookworm says most effective devil in America as it relates to the conversation around what media is going to do with, with this when they chop up this clip right here. That's going to happen. Right. Guys, most effective devil in America. You guys can get the merch over at Black Guns Matter shop. So let's get back to the story, though, guys. All right. So the rat says talking about his drug problems and all of that. And Smith said the year had been rough for him as his nine-year-old child had died months before. So what? Go sell drugs. Don't go murder people. Go, go sell whatever. If you're into that life, go make some money. Go do, a, go do some free market enterprise. All right? So he's on a stand belly aching about the year had been rough for him as his nine-year-old child had died months before. Man, if your child would have saw that you were a fucking rat, you know, he would have had it rough. Because that means his friends would have known that he might be a mouse. But anyway, God bless the dead. The child, the, the child, the child didn't have nothing to do with this. Smith was made aware of multiple hits out on artists affiliated with Young Dolph's PRE record label, Pre. After speaking with Govan and Big Jook, Yo got his brother who was shot and killed in January. Now, this is where the story starts getting a little bit more thick. Like I started in this conversation talking about Gotti's position saying, Last time I talked to Dolph, it ain't no beef. It was positive. I want everybody to do good. I want everybody to do good from the shirt of Memphis. That's how they talk about it, man. Sorry. They got a weird accent. So that's questionable in and of itself. Because the, the label is called Cocaine Music Group. <laughs> okay? Like, if your label is called, we sell cocaine, we shoot people, it's a little like, hey, man, you're putting yourself in the middle of some shit. All right? So big joke who allegedly was putting the hit out on Dolph's artist was one, is one step removed from Yo Gotti. And Juke was murdered in January. Obviously, that was retaliatory. Duh, right? Or may not. Let's go a little bit, read a little bit further. Smith said he and Johnson traveled together with Johnson picking him up. Smith said the initial plan was to shoot Thornton at a turkey drive, but spotted the camouflage rat Corvette Thornton was known to drive. Guys, none of you know what kind of vehicle I drive. Vehicles. None of you know where I live. Love you all. But riding around in a flashy car in a city where there's beef and you got issues, that's not a smart take. I'm sorry. And that's not this is not to be disrespectful to Dolphin in any way, shape or form. Because then you have guys like this that's hungry, broke motherfuckers that don't want to work to get it for themselves, but want to take it for you for a quick payday. Continuing. When they saw Thornton's wrapped car, they started following him and act and saw him pull into the parking lot of the cookie shop where he was killed. Smith was the first to exit the car when they pulled into the parking lot of Makita's. Makita's is the name of the location. Smith said Monday he, quote, couldn't tell you how many times I shot him, meaning Dolph. Smith said he was shot by Marcus Thornton, the brother of young Dolph, who was present at the cookie shop and needed to have a wound kit to clean up his injuries. 
Smith was said he was shot in the arm and leg with Johnson being grazed by a bullet in his back. Smith also said the duo ditched the white Mercedes in a driveway at a home in Orange Mound directly after the shooting. When they ditched the car, they then drove a different vehicle to an apartment in South Memphis where they changed their clothes and cleaned their wounds. Smith detailed the hours of getting cleaned up in court, including how we went back to the ditched white Mercedes and to clean it up. Smith was later asked about his payment and said in total, listen to this, y'all. I want y'all to fucking listen to this. This rat, moronic, piece of shit murderer was doing this for a payout. And we're going to go through all of this today. The payout was supposed to be this man's supposed to get 40, this man's supposed to get 40, that man's supposed to get 20. That's a hundred grand payout. Let me tell y'all, Smith was later asked about his payment. This is his own words on the stand. Smith was later asked about his payment and said, in total, he received. Matter of fact, in the chat, tell me what y'all think he got. If you know, don't say it. But if you don't know, take a guess. Let's engage in here a little bit in the chat. Let's hit that like button. Let's chop it up. I want y'all to tell me how much y'all think he got. How much y'all think he got for murdering young Dolph in his town when he was about to do a damn community drive? How much y'all think? How much do you think he got? There was, the whole deal was supposed to be 100 grand. Whole deal was supposed to be 100 racks. Rob, Big D Rob says 10K. Bookworm says he got stiffed. That's what he got. How much y'all think he got? These, this is where I am not a street dude. I'm going to be outside. I'm going to do whatever I need to do. I'm going to get busy. I'm going to defend self if need be. Mike White hit it right on the head. That means Mike looked it up. Okay. Smith was later asked about his payment and said in total he received $800 before he arrested. It's $800. Y'all can see it on the screen. Right? $800. So this man is on the stage on a stand, being 100% a rat, 100% a rat, promised him supposed to get 40, the other person supposed to get 40, other man for setting it up supposed to get 20, they got $800. Now, they could be lying. Maybe they did the hit, they stashed the money, they got to a family member, they got all of the bread. Juke did Juke the person that's supposed to put the hit out. Juke dead. They don't want no smoke with God. They don't want their family outside. Getting it? Maybe they gave the money to a family member like, look, I'm cooked. I'm booked. Y'all got it. Maybe that's the case. And that's giving me a whole level of, of thinking. A whole level of thinking. Maybe this, maybe they was this smart. And maybe they, and it don't seem like they're the motherfucking uh, evil geniuses of the world. $800. This guy's, listen. Young people that you might come across this shit, you better, you better sell t-shirts. You better find a design, man. Listen, you better find something that the people can get behind. You work your ass off. You make smart choices with the bread. You build your credit. You get an LLC. You get a business license. You start learning as much as you can about business, marketing, learning as many trades and skills. You get on these internets. You get on these phones. And you get money. That's the new block. The new block is these laptops. The new block is me communicating with y'all and giving y'all information. The, the new block is if y'all got a small business that y'all are promoting and you say, yo, my, I'm going to throw a super chat up. Shout out my business. The new block is getting paid that way. That's what it is. It ain't, it ain't, it ain't, it ain't all of this other shit. It ain't all this other shit. And I, and I don't know who told or didn't tell the young bucks, but that's what it is. $800. These morons didn't even have the foresight to get the money up front. And I'm, again, I'm not, I'm not, listen, I'm not justifying it. And Matt, I'm, listen, guys, I'm 1,000% I'm not justifying this. But what I am going to say to you is this was dumb. $800 in clout. I got Mike Trenton says $800 in clout. The clout to clout, some is priceless and it's unfortunate. And these guys will more than likely never, ever, un, un, outside of whatever deal they took, because they took some sort of deal. I'm willing to bet they took some sort of deal, okay? Outside of whatever deal they took, right? Outside of whatever deal these guys took, they get $800 for their life. 
Mike Trenton with the eight, excuse me, I was about to say $800. <laughs> Mike Trenton with the $10 bringing us to $150 more needed for the Super Chat. That's the goal for tonight, guys. We need $150 more. You're supporting Black Guns Matter, our in-person classes, our firearm safety, our conflict resolution. All of those things is what you support with these Super Chats. Bookworm says, clout for killing someone is insane. It's wild. It's really wild when you think about it. Okay? Let's, let's read, because this was a few days back. I want to read this real quick for you guys. Mike Trenton with the $10 Super Chat. We're 150 away from today's goal. I want to look at this one, too, real quick, guys. <clears throat> let's check this out. This is another one. I'm going to close this window here. Prosecutors, prosecutors use video surveillance to try to link Justin Johnson, a.k.a. Straight Drop, to the death of young dolphin day two of testimony Tuesday. Now, this was yesterday. Okay. A prosecutor walked the jury through the moments they saw, they say, show Johnson in the clothes at the time of the murder and in the vehicles coming and going from the apartment where he was staying. See a blog of today's events is below, but let's read this real quick. 4 p.m. Justin Johnson's brother, Jamarcus Johnson, is taking a stand. He took a plea deal. He took a plea deal after he was charged with accessory after the fact. Hey, listen, we got you with accessory after the fact of the murder. You, was, you were accessory to it. Tell on everybody. And then the so-called gangsters that didn't pay the people to do the shooting ahead of time stiffed them in it, uh, together. This one guy saying he only got $800, so now everybody willing to rap. We, if, if they did not geniuses and got the money and just being quiet about it and gave it to friends and family members or whatever they did, gave it to that girl, whatever it is, all right? If they didn't do that, now they disgruntled employees. Okay, he's so that's when the the people go. Oh, we got you accessory to the fact, brother. You can make this a lot easier for yourself if you be unprincipled and don't just stand on your own too and what you did. He's accused of helping Justin after the alleged murder. He's been out on bond, but is not showing his face during testimony because he's a rat. What did I say earlier in the other story? Rat, rat, splinter, not even. Okay. Court wrapped the day at 4.15. Tuesday, 2 p.m., after the lunch break, Johnson's defense attorney is questioning Dabney. He asked him about the condition of the white Mercedes that was allegedly used in the murder when it was found behind a home in Orange Mound. The defense pointed out that Johnson was never seen behind the wheel or even in the white Mercedes when it came to and went from Crosstown Concourse. He also made a point to highlight how big the complex is. Dabney said that Johnson walked from the area where the Mercedes was parked. Next on the stand is Kiston Gardner. He testified that he gave Johnson a white Mercedes at the gas station. He claims he had no idea what it would be used for. He also called Young Dolph family while explaining that he didn't see the rapper as a rival. Family. Family. Tuesday noon, during the opening statements on Monday, Prosecutor Hagerman said they, suspects, did the best they could in relation to cleaning up their mess and getting away, but know that the problem is it's not 1981, it's 1991, it's not even 2011, it was 2021. Cameras are everywhere and everyone has phones. Let's be clear about that. You motherfuckers that's talking that street shit, if I pop somebody, it's because they attacked me. Simple and plain. Simple and plain. There's no, there's no other conversation about it. Okay? OG Tank. OG Tank with the... Let me show this real quick. OG Tank with the $15. So now, guys, we're down to $135 more needed for the chat for tonight. Shouts to Silverback Tactical in Duncanville, Texas, and Ogun Tactical in Everman, Texas, to Dallas-Fort Worth area, Black FFLs, and retail shops. Huge shouts for that. Shouts to everybody that's adding more FFLs, adding more gun stores. America needs them. It's the only way we prevent against here. I'm going to leave that up for a while, OG Tank. Thank you for that 15. I think the number to beat, well, no, because Vaughn, I think, gave $10 twice. The number, the high number to beat for tonight so far is $20, all right? Thank you, but I'm going to leave that up, OG Tank. Again, guys, make sure you all check that comp those companies out. Silverback Tactical in Duncanville, Texas, and Ogun Tactical in Everman, Texas, in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. I love Dallas. I love Texas. Clean. Dallas is so – Philly get a little grimy, a little dirty. All right? So I'm going to leave that up, guys. All right? OG Tank with the love. All right? Now, let's read a little bit more. Oh, before I go back to that, I want to – that's the point that I was making. These laptops – these phones and this internet, that's the new block. You can get money. TikTok shop, 
Amazon dropship, t-shirts, dropshipping, custom, whatever. Fiverr, you a graphic designer? You do 10 little quick designs a day for people on Fiverr, five, ten dollars every day. That's a hundred dollars. And that's even if that's just me and you in the house working all day in front of your laptop and you do six hours, seven hours of that. A hundred dollars a day every 10 days. That's a thousand dollars, a thousand dollars. Right. Three times, 30 days in a month. That's three thousand dollars. Twelve times three is thirty six thousand dollars from your crib. So these motherfuckers that's robbing and killing people for the thought of maybe twenty to forty thousand dollars. You could be in the crib watching TV, getting work done, still making thirty six thousand dollars, working out in your apartment complex, getting yourself together and reading, just making flyers. My point here is the Internet, the Wi-Fi, the connect, the hard connection, the laptop, the phones. That's the new trap. You don't got to rob no people because I listen, I don't give a fuck if you're from the hood. If you're robbing and terrorizing people, fa Dolph's family will never see their family member and loved one again. We'll never see him. Never. So here we got one millionaire killed at the behest of another millionaire who's now also dead. And all of the broke motherfuckers in between that got maybe $800 between them based on their testimony are ratting on each other. So all of the broke motherfuckers is ratting on each other. All of them ratting on each other and the two millionaires that could have changed the lives of everybody in their lineage are now dead. If you want to talk about us not needing conflict resolution in our communities, I want to tell you to shut the hell up. We don't we're not stopping and thinking about these things, guys. Let's read a little bit more. Prosecutors played a series of videos with a countdown to young Dolph's death in court. Justin Johnson was caught on camera. They're everywhere. In the same clothes he had on leaving his crosstown concourse apartment in Midtown that was seen in the Makita's surveillance video during the fatal shooting. Prosecutors say the video shows Johnson leaving his apartment around 30 minutes before the killing. He is walking out with his daughter, leaving in the white Mercedes the prosecutors say the suspects used during the shooting. After the shooting, video footage shows Johnson at his cousin's apartment changing into a yellow hoodie, prosecutors say. Hours later, he returns to Crosstown in a yellow hoodie. The video shows him going up to the unit. Then the video shows him leaving the unit, bags packed. But 17 hours before Young Dolph's murder, the jury is shown surveillance video from Crosstown Concourse of a white Ford Expedition pulling into the parking garage. You then see a man prosecutors identify as Johnson in the same outfit he wore the day of the shooting. As the hours count down, the video shows Johnson coming and going, but at one point he returns in a white Mercedes car. They also showed a video of a car exchange at a gas station in the middle of the night where the Mercedes is picked up. See, this is where the stupid motherfuckers don't understand. Now, I want to be very clear here, guys. I'm not advocating for murder. No, not going to do it. But what I am going to say is, if you are a television watching motherfucker that doesn't understand how to dispose of vehicles, how to avoid detection, how to insert what all of the things that are obviously that they did wrong here. First, what they did wrong was murder a human. Let's, let's, let's start with there, okay? Let's start there. First thing they did was murder a human. Then they happened to murder a human that was known and prominent. Then they were stupid enough to not get paid for it. Then they were stupid enough to do everything wrong, switching the same cars, Doing all of this, you didn't have an exit plan. You didn't murder somebody and get in the vehicle and go all the way to a whole nother city, state, country. You couldn't because you needed the money. And you didn't get the money up front. This is not the game anymore, people. It's not about killing people in our own fucking community. I don't have no quarter for that shit. Ain't nothing cool about that shit. Will I pop the shit out of somebody and like potentially try to put plug your hole up? After I stopped the threat, yep, absolutely. Am I going out of my way to start fights with people or yo, such and such has said they don't like such and such, so you should shoot them. You're a fucking moron. You are a moron. Let's read some more. Tuesday morning, first witness called Terrence Dabney, who was a homicide investigator on Young Dolph's case. Dabney explained the kinds of shell cases found on the scene. He said outside of the businesses, they found two kinds, cases that came from AR and ones from a handgun. Inside, well, they said assault rifle. But I'm saying AR because I'm just going with that. But 
I just hate saying that phrase. Like, come on, guys. But anyway, it was a Draco. And based on the video that I saw, it looked like a Draco. Um, and one's from a handgun. Inside, they found nine millimeter cases, which came, which came from young Dolph Brothers gun when he shot back. Dabney said the weapons used in the shooting had never been recovered. He said the stolen Mercedes used in the shooting was recovered at an abandoned home in Orange Mound. Inside the car, they found Cornelius Smith's fingerprints. They showed a video of the suspects arriving in the apartment complex, 37. I mean, I'm talking about, we got pictures. You motherfucker, like, like, look, just look at this, y'all. Look, look, look. This over here is Dolph's car to the right, okay? Those are the casings. And I want to find the video of when they actually did the shooting. They look so fucking disrespectfully dumb. Oh, and all of the fucking rap videos have you shooting sideways, doing all this goofy shit, grabbing the Draco, just trying to throw the bullets. Just fucking moron. I hope they go to jail for the rest of their life. Now, read this. I just wanted my money. Those were the words in court Monday from Cornelius Smith, one of the men accused in the ambush killing of Memphis rapper Young Dolphin 21. Smith was testifying against a, another accused gunman, Justin Johnson. Testifying against each other. The state played them both against the middle with their $800 asses. According to Smith, the two were hired to carry out the hit against Dolph, but never got their full payment. I mean, this goes on and on. Let's read, let me slow down a little bit. Okay, I can't tell how many times I shot. I just was, I was just continuously, Smith testified, describing the shooting at Makita's Cookies. I shot through the glass, so I wasn't close up on him. I was shooting through the glass. I saw him standing by the window, just got out and started shooting. Smith said that moments after the shooting, he FaceTimed Big Jook, using sign language to tell him young Dolph had been shot. So now, you're talking to Big Joe using sign language on FaceTime to tell him Dolph had been shot. So you get on a fucking phone of any sort after you did a murder and you implicate the person that paid you to go do the murder. These are not the smartest motherfuckers. Smith said he was promised $40,000 for his role in the shooting. He said he actually received $500. Okay, so I can't even call them $400 motherfuckers in between. One of them's a $300 motherfucker, allegedly, and one of them's a $500. Jurors were also shown a photo of the t-shirt worn by Dolph the day he was shot some 20 times. A medical examiner said he died of gunshot wounds to the head, torso, and neck. Johnson's attorney said his client is innocent. Say, <laughs> woo, did y'all hear that? Listen, Johnson's attorney says his client is innocent, saying there are two sides to every story and Govan was using Johnson. Quote, he liked to exploit. He liked to exploit young rappers like Mr. Johnson, he said. He brings no skill to the table, but you're going to hear testimony, he intended. His sole mission to get 30 to 60 percent peace from Mr. Johnson. It's still unclear whether Govan or Johnson will take the stand in this trial. This is going to bring us, we're going to transition into the next phase, but I want to say this first. First and foremost, everybody that's in the stream, if you're watching it on X, you're watching it on Rumble, hit the like button. Please share this all over the place, guys. Very important. It's not just about this murder and because he was a beloved hip hop artist in Memphis. I love Memphis. They barbecue is insane. I love Memphis. Beale Street is a fucking vibe. I was the last time I think, I think I was there like maybe two summers ago. Beale Street is a vibe. I loved it. And I felt like, that, yeah, everybody got a gun on Bill Street. I felt comfortable, but I loved it. Had some, like, street food. And, you know, Memphis get busy. Let's be very clear. But this isn't about the death of a beloved homegrown hero. This isn't about necessarily about that for what our conversation here tonight is, everybody. The conversation here tonight is about what can we do in recognizing this to stop young people from getting involved in this goofy shit. One. Two how we can deal with de-escalation and all that. So we're going to go into that. But real quick, guys, I want everybody that's watching this on every platform, youtube.com forward slash Maj2Ray, rumble.com forward slash Maj2Ray, x maj 2 ray 999 I want you guys to reshare it, repost it on X, hit that like button. I need everybody in here to just start smashing the hell out of the like button. We, need, we want to boost the algorithm. We got 400 and how many in here? Uh, we have... 440, 480 some odd folks in here watching, all right? 
this is what I want everybody to do. I, obviously, I want you guys to hit the like button on whatever platform you're watching. If you're watching it on X, more specifically, just repost it. Cost you nothing. Repost it. And we're, I think we're $135 away from our stream goal for tonight. Okay? Dark Smithia says, 1G, not worth it. It's not. Even if they would have got the $100,000, it's not worth it. You can make $100,000 in like six months, a year. If you really, $100,000 is two grand a week. Two grand a week is, let's say, $700 a day. Okay? Wait, excuse me. $300 a day. Triple that. $2,100. $300 a day. Okay? That's it. So, if it, even if the, and mind you, they were only anticipating getting the 40 Gs split. And then the dude that hooked it all the way up, he get the 20, right? It's not worth 40 grand. It's wild. It's, it's, not even, it's not even a conversation to have. For me to kill somebody, it got to be you were trying to kill me. It's not, oh, I don't like them, so we're going to shoot them. You, th that person is not worth my shells. You're not worth my shells. If I don't like you, I don't fuck with you. I don't ignore you. I make fun of you. I kill you with success. I'm, I'm, I'm coward. I'm suffering from success. I'm not doing that. It's not worth it. It's not. And I'm saying that based on math. Two grand a week, 52 weeks a year. You make more. If you focus on two grand a week, that's more than $100,000 a year. So in one year, them grinding and figuring it out with the internet, because I don't want to hear that bullshit. I did a, a live on uh, the Shade Room yesterday, and they were trying to cap me up into believing some shit like, oh, black people can't get to the library, excuse me, can't get to the DMV to get an ID. And I'm like, yo, y'all at the fucking brunches drinking, which means you got an ID. You at the club, you at the rec you fucking concerts. Stop it. So we're not going to act like black folks can't, you know, Joe Biden. Oh, blacks can't get to the computer and the Internet. Fuck out of here. Stop it. Stop it. And that sob story about him talking about, oh, oh, my child died last year, nine years old, and I'm on drugs. You a fucking fiend. This is the reason why drugs aren't the cool shit. This is the reason why I cut out a lot of smoking, a lot of drinking. It On one level, on a spiritual level. And again, guys, hit the, hit the like button if you got some questions. Ask them. Also, guys, we're $135 away from our goal for today. We tried to do $200 yesterday, $200 today. We didn't get it yesterday. Let's try to get it today. Right? If we get three folks to give $50, I don't know what the uh, most amount you can give for a super chat. But if you do that, if we get three folks at the $50 level, we'd be over the goal. And oh, we got super weapons with a $2 joint. Let's get 10 folks to match that. Super weapon says, is the shade room live stream available somewhere online? I don't know. I got the folks that um it was on TikTok. Their stream, their stream was on TikTok. Um, I'm not sure if it is going to be recorded. I, I sent the email over to those folks, and I'll let y'all know. Thank you for that $2 so donation, guys. At $135, if we get 70 folks to match this $2 donation out of the 500 that's in the joint, we get there. All right? Um, I want to be clear. We are not victims. We have internet access. The fucking $2,000 a week is not unfathomable. It might be difficult in the beginning, but it's not fa unfathomable. Very important that we talk about this. And I want to transition into this next thing here, guys. Um, this is very important. This is very important because this ties into what happens when communities, uh, the, the negative that has been put into communities is not addressed. And folks from the community that may have had something to do with some of the damage in that community don't change their ways and turn around. This is what happens. This is a multi-million dollar artist that just came to the community to do the turkey drive and do that type of shit, was at the, supporting another local business and was gunned down in front of that business. This is not okay. And we have to do things to jump in the middle of that. So I want you to treat yours. This is T.I. and Boosie. And I don't know if you guys saw this. Uh, I'm going to put it over. I think I'm going to do on our email blast over at solutionaryuniversity.org. I think I'm going to uh, let me actually put that up in there. I think I'm going to do an article about this. Because this is 1000% conflict resolution de escalation. Solutionaryuniversity.org. Go over to that site. It's right below me. Go over to that site and join our mailing list, everybody. Join our mailing list. You get an email, it's a newsletter. Sometimes we'll throw some, hey, we have in a sale. But for the most part, it's very useful information. It's always useful. Um, but it's daily and, you know, weekly, a bunch of times a week, a few times a week 
a lot of motivational, just information, just good stuff. So sign up to be on a newsletter, health and fitness stuff, civics and all that, solutionaryuniversity.org. Subscribe, okay? Um, we need to talk about this as a piece as it relates to conflict resolution. And that young Dolph situation with these broke motherfuckers that were not, were trying to be lazy. And let me be clear, I'm not making fun of people that have economic hard times. Let me be clear. I don't mean broke in the sense of shit tight. Shit tight all over. We just had four years of the administration that we fucking had. Massive, and not even just this administration. We're talking about massive money printing. They asking for hyperinflation and stagflation, okay? So what I mean by that is broke in the sense of, all right, shit happens. It's trying to pivot and figure out a way to get it without trying to take from somebody else. That's a broke mindset. The world is full of abundance. And you can watch what you eat, work out, raise your vibration, be spiritual, meditate, spend time with your family. Keep the focus and the mindset of what you're doing this shit for. Not taking from somebody else. That's a rich mentality. A wealthy mentality. Okay? So when I say broke, I want to be very clear. Okay, but you got these brokies, low vibrational motherfuckers, right? And what they do is they want to take from somebody and then fuck somebody's whole generational wealth conversation. Somebody that says, I need the money. So instead of me ro even robbing the dude, I'm going to kill him and I don't even get the money and I throw away my motherfucking freedom. That's because the culture in certain communities, if not careful, the music becomes a low vibrational frequency for fucking demonic possession. I'm going to say that again. The low vibrational music that promotes death and destruction. You know, I used to be a hip hop artist. You can't find one fucking song of me talking about I'm going to kill you because you whatever. If I'm going to kill you, you're the last one to know about it. I promise you that. With that being the case. This thought process of destruction and death that's repeated, that becomes a mantra, that becomes a vibration, is grounds for demonic possession. And I don't mean like, like the movies. I mean, you operating in a lower fucking mindset that doesn't understand the value that your body has. You are a miracle by even being here. Miracle for even being here. And you're not looking at the vast beauty of the magic that is around you every single day. Right now, y'all are watching me on whatever platform you're watching me on, right? And that platform, you're probably watching it wireless. That is magical. And I can magically communicate with people and people are moved by it. And the people want more to be motivated by so they take classes, they get in alignment. That's what we do as solutionaries. That's what Solutionary University is about. But unfortunately, that message didn't get to this, these young men that decided to do that. Oh, so, okay, Butterfly Jones said, T.I. shooting a movie. This is a skit. Okay, well, even if it's a skit, I'm glad, I'm, I'm glad that it's a skit. God, dog, I'm glad that this is a skit. I'm glad you said that, bro, because I thought this was real. You got some, send me some in the links or some shit like that. I don't know if we could do links, hyperlinks in the super chat. But, I, but it did come off a little performative. I did think that. But then when they said they were shooting a video, I'm like, oh. But however, it still ties into this. So thank you, Butterf Butterfly Jones. Thank you for that, B Butterfly Jones. Thank you. I think I'm saying that right. It's, this is a movie. Thank you for that so much. So much, because I was about to go in on that. But let's look at this right here, and I want to tie that back into this Young Dolph situation. Guys, we got about maybe 10 or 15 minutes. All right. OK. He says Craig Smith is in the movie. Craig Smith is a comic. He's in the movie, too. Thank you for that. Let's check this out real quick, guys. And I, I want to get you guys perspective. And I want to share with you why I'm saying what I'm saying as it relates to uh, this tying this into the Young Dolph situation. Why y'all got so much time, bro? Why y'all always got to have guns? What is it about the guns, man? It's not illegal to have guns. Well, in the manner in which you portray and in the lifestyle, this shit don't look legitimate, sir. Cause I'm not supporting no more. I'm not. Can't do it. I'm not. What kind of parent gonna support their kids and they don't got them slapping, right. bigger than you, popping? And then you got a gun in your book there. So this so motherfucker twelve pull up and they say, hey, hey, who who do you belong to? Who raised their hand? Somebody got to raise their hand. I've been seeing him around too. There a lot. You gonna raise your own hand? I've been seeing him around too. Huh? 
Well, when you got drugs, it ain't like it ain't. Uh, I know that. I got drugs. When y'all got drugs got around drugs. those legal guns, they call. It's not like possession that. of a firearm and commission of a crime, sir. That is a felony. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. This shit ain't, hey man, this shit ain't free. This shit come out of count. I, I can't believe this shit, man. Why y'all, what happened to some motherfuckers? Why y'all don't make no motherfuckers love me? You got girls out here. Why don't you talk about being in love, man? Why don't you talk about wanting to, wanting to, wanting to, wanting to lay down and, 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 you know. Uh, this is, so, again, now, now I can laugh a little bit more about it, because I'm glad that but, but Butterfly Jones said this is a movie skit. I thought somebody, because the way that it was shot, it was like somebody saw because how it was presented was T.I. and Boosie happened to be around and their T.I.'s son, King, was shooting a music video, okay? Yeah, what happened to talking about love? Bookworm said, yeah, what happened to talking about love? Listen, I talk about love. I'm a lover. I'm a lover and a fighter. You know what I mean? Me. I'm a lover. Me personally. Okay? Saying this to say... I love to see things like this, though. Now, if this was accurate, and if this, again, I, the brother said it's, it's a movie set, and I'm, I'm glad to accept it as that, right? Um, however, if this was real, this is the type of engagement that we need from people that may have even been a menace in, their, in our communities later on. There are so many men that come back from war, that come back from you know military service in general, that come home from the feds, state prisons, whatever, and have turned their lives around or are in a position to minister to younger people. And that's valid. That's, that's valid. Okay? That's valid. My point in saying that is we need that. The reason why a young Dolph murder happens is because there, are, there needs to be more people saying, listen, you ain't got to go rob nobody for the bread. You ain't got to try to shoot. And even if it's just, you, oh, I'm just going to go rob them. Robberies, I'm telling y'all. Robberies turn into homicides real fast. Could, they could turn into homicide. All it takes is the one person that ain't trying to do what you tell them to do because you got a gun. And every so often, at most times, people, when they get a gun pointed at them, do what they told. But every so often, it's just one rambunctious motherfucker. Now what? So my point in saying this is there needs to be more of that type of tutelage. I'm so thankful that that was a movie skit. and Because I was about to go like, yo. How the fuck is T.I. around the fire? I'm not, and again, I'm a Second Amendment person. T.I. can do what he want. I don't believe in those bullshit rules. But I'm like, damn, do they want to be on camera saying that they sons got guns and it was weed around and Boosie? So my first thought was that. I'm like, who put that out? That, that was, it couldn't have been approved by Boosie. He just beat some shit, right? But I'm glad that that was filmed in like more of a skit type of situation for a movie. However, that does not change the fact that this is what our communities need. OK, let's take a couple of questions, guys. We're going to wrap up here shortly. Guys, remember, SolutionaryUniversity.org, we are on a tour. For the month of October, we're going to be in Baton Rouge. We're going to be in Phoenix. We're going to be in Chicago. We're going to be in Cleveland. We're going to be in somewhere else, St. Louis. OK, we're going to be in all of those places for the month of October. All of the classes in these cities, if you are there, if you're in these cities, these classes are yours. They're free to you because of your voluntary donations, because there's people coming into the chat Going, hey, I'll throw ten dollars, guys. By the way, we're one hundred and thirty-five dollars away from my chat. Let's flood the chat with super chats. Flood it, flood it, flood it. This goes to the work, guys. Flood it with super chats. Flood it with super chats. Give single.com forward slash solutionary for straight donations. But the super chat, you can just hit the link. Let me put this in here real quick, where everybody can donate as well. Okay. Um, my point in saying this, guys, is the link below. Give single.com forward slash solutionary to donate directly. But if you're on YouTube. If you want to do a super chat, we need $135 more in super chats. If you are a super chat, I want you to name a small business, your social media, your business, whatever it is in that super chat. And I want everybody that sees it, I want you to go just follow them on the social media. Support and get behind the people that are doing things in our communities, small businesses more specifically, because that small business turns into a big business. And then they start hiring folks. We're going to be in St. Louis next month, right? Teaching the class. One of my favorite facilities to go to in the world is First Form Nutrition. They, they two young brothers from the Lou, okay? Andy and his brother, Frisella, the creators of First Form, that's a $100 million a year company, okay? First Form. That small business that they started when they were 19 turned into a $100 million a year business, okay? 
So we want to support people that's doing that. So if you are giving a super chat, if you are giving to GiveSingo.com forward slash Solutionary, if you are supporting, making sure that these classes continue, the content continues, I want you to put your small business, your name or somebody else and put your website, whatever it is, I want you to put it in the donor comment section and I want you to put it in the super chat. Promote good. That sums up what we're talking about today. Young Dolph and that community, that culture of fuckery, of death and destruction as it relates to your own community, of buffoonery, because how you getting a paid to do something that you, and you did and you ain't get paid to do it, okay? And I'm not justifying the killing, but that speaks to the goofy mindset. But if you was somewhere laid up on the internet, on the new block, the, computer, the laptop, the telephone, the Wi-Fi, the hard line, the internet is yours. The internet is mine. We raised over $700,000 over the last few years and gave it away to benefit and empower our communities. We don't have to rob, steal, and kill. That shit is lame, bro. Like, you, you all screw-faced. Like, you ain't, you ain't gonna get no girls. You ain't gonna be able to go nowhere. I'm telling you, I know. My point in saying that is we need to highlight the things that are good. So, guys, if we can get three more folks at the Super Chat level of $50 or whatever the highest is. I, somebody tell me what's the highest you can give on the Super Chat. I don't know. Right, three folks at three folks at fifty dollars gets us over that for tonight. Givesingle.com forward slash solutionary helps out with the, the work. And I want y'all guys to make sure that you're sharing the, the uh, live all over the stream, all over the place. Uh, I want to I want to end with this. Uh, this is why we make solutionaryuniversity.org. Okay, thank you, Django off the chain said he just subbed. Appreciate that. Big D Rob says shout to Andy. I'm talking about Andy Fusella. Television Tuber says, what do you think about gun permits? Necessary or unnecessary? Fucking unnecessary and unconstitutional. Unnecessary and unconstitutional. <laughs> Full stop. Um, this is why we have Solutionary University. This is why we do the tours. We have to have a serious stream of consciousness that deals with higher vibration, that deals with higher levels of consciousness, that deals with higher levels of responsibility, higher levels of hard work. And we want you to share your experiences. We want you to write for Solutionary University. Shoot me an email, majtoure at solutionaryuniversity.org. Shoot me an email. Hey, Maj, I want to just take some of my journals. I want to write about ideas. I want to write. We will promote you. I will repost all of everybody that writes for Solutionary University. Hey, Maj, I'm, I'm, I'm in St. Louis. I'm in Chicago. I'm in Phoenix. I'm in, uh, you know, whatever other cities, Cleveland, right? Baton Rouge. I'm there, Maj. Hey, can I, can, what can I do to volunteer? Hey, Maj, you got some merch that I could sell. I want you to sign up for the affiliate program. We have an affiliate program. You take 20% of the commissions of each sale. We're coming up with entire like, hey, here's the merch. Here's what you say. Here's the photos. Promote it. Give them your direct link. Guys, okay, somebody says the most is 500. I've never had somebody give a $500 sub. Hey, one of you big spenders that want to do that, donate it to givesingo.com forward slash solutionary or be a $500 uh, super chat. That'll be great. I don't even, I, I don't even know if I've ever seen it. I don't think I've ever seen. But guys, this is what we're behind. This, these are our communities. And like, we're just sitting around watching. How many fucking times, guys? Nipsey, in front of his own place of business. Place of business. Dolph, supporting a place of business. We, like, come on. How many times are we going to allow this shit to be the case? We have the power to course correct this situation. We just have to do it. And we do that by supporting the people, organizations, and businesses that are doing things in our communities. It don't, it don't got to be about yelling at nobody else. It don't got to be about being a square. It don't, I mean, I'm square. I read books. I shoot guns. I go to the gym. I love my woman. That's it. That's it. Okay? My point in saying that is that's square, but that square should have get you rich. That square should have you traveling around the whole globe. That square should have you destroying generational curses. OK, so we support the organizations and people that are doing that. So, guys, you know, that's the work that we do. Go over to givesingo.com forward slash solutionary. Match at whatever level. We, let's see if we can get if we short one hundred and thirty five dollars. We're going to tap out here. It's been great talking to you guys every Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern. We're going to talk about some things um, pop culture related, civics related, hip hop related, uh, political education related. OK. We're going to have that discussion to make sure we're leaving with solutions. And the solution for today is this is what I want you all to do. Obviously, I want you guys to support. Gibsongo.com forward slash solutionary. Support the work. Duh. We're going to do the work. Pay it forward. 
If you match at the $100 level, you get access to all of our online classes, all of that other stuff. Y'all know that. And if you don't, just ask me after this. However, I want you guys to obviously share this to your platforms. Tag me so I can repost you. But I want you today to find a youngin', a youngin', and just, just talk to him, man. See what his headset's about. See what his mindset, his mentality, see if he's on, or a young woman, because there's some wild young ladies out here too. See where they're at and just converse with them about putting more positive vibrations into their thought process. If, they, if you know they're fighters, and if you go to the gym, schedule a time to go to the gym with them. Get some of that energy out. Let them endorphins start popping. Start putting them on the Solutionary University. We have to do more to make sure that our young people are figuring out a way to generate resources, vibrate higher, think better, and live longer. My name is Maj Toure. Thank you all for tapping in. I'll see you all tomorrow, 6 p.m. Eastern, youtube.com forward slash Maj Toure, rumble.com forward slash Maj Toure, X, Maj Toure 999. Follow me on all of those platforms, solutionaryuniversity.org. Sign up for one of those free Somebody's paid it for it free. Basic firearms classes coming to your city in the next month of October. I will see you all tomorrow. Be safe. Be solutionary.